In this video we'll, we'll create this spreadsheet um, which shows the maximum speed of the car around the bend um, for different radiuses. Uh, the yellow is the bend radius so we've got a 20 meter, 20 meter radius bend going up to a, a, a 1 kilometer radius bend. The t first table is in meters per second and the second table is the same thing but in miles per hour. On the left hand side we've got um, mu which is the, which, uh, um, is the coefficient of friction um, between the tyres and the road surface going from point 0.1 to point 0.9 and the same for the top table. So both tables are identical. So uh, just look at, looking at a typical result, um, this one here, 22.29. Now that is the maximum speed of the car around the corner uh, for a bend radius of 100 meters and a coefficient of friction of 0.1. So that would be a slick tire in the wet around a 100 meter bend. Uh, so 22.29 miles per hour. Now we'll try and create this table. First of all, let's have a quick look at the, the formula involved in it. Um, the centripetal force around the bend for the car to remain uh, in traction has to be less than the maximum frictional force available from the tyres. The centripetal force uh, is given by the formula um, M V squared over R R is the radius of the bend V is the velocity of the car and M is the mass of the car and at the limit that is equal to mu N where mu is the coefficient of friction and n is the is the normal force um, acting down on the on the road surface uh, and we can also write instead of that mg m is the mass of the car and g is the acceleration due to gravity there are two m's here we cancel them out we rearrange the equation putting it in terms of v and we we get that the maximum velocity around the bend is equal to the square root of the coefficient of friction times the radius of the bend times gravity and that's the formula we're going to use. So let's go back to the spreadsheet. Um, start off by creating a new table. We're going to put in um, the values. So you want 20 going up to 1000. This sequence of 2510 is quite useful. It sort of almost doubles. It should be 200. OK, I'll leave the formatting till later and the coefficient of friction will be in this column here. OK. <coughs> now in here we need to put the formula. The formula we're going to use is the one we've just derived. So you want the square root of the coefficient of friction times the radius times g. So that would be equal to the square root of the coefficient of friction times the radius times g, which is 9.81. Working to two decimal points here, hence 9.81. The answer is given to a lot more decimal points, so we don't need more than two. See, let's just reduce that down. And this is the answer in metres per second. Now, it's going to be the same formula in all of these cells. 
looking back at the original table. See, 4.43 is the answer we've got. 4.43 here, and we want to copy the same formula to all those cells. But we don't, we don't, we don't want to have to type it in everywhere. So if we just copy it across, I'll just do one, and we'll see what happens. So let's put the formula in that cell. I copied it by clicking on that black thing on the bottom right hand corner and then just dragging that across. It saves doing um, cutting and pasting. 46.41 is not the same. We should, the answer should be 7. So what went wrong? Let's have a look at the formula here. The formula, I've just double clicked on that cell, it brings up the formula. So square root of C5, ah, C5 is not right. Now what happened there? When when you drag a formula across, it tends to drag the cells with it, unless you put a dollar in front of it. Um, so we need to go back to the original. I'll just delete that by pressing the delete key. Go back to this one. We need to put a dollar in front of the B5 reference. So the dollar in front of the B will stop the B from being copied. I could have put the dollar in front of the 5, um, but I put the dollar in front of the B because I want I um, because I wanted to be copied um, vertical but not horizontal. The C, the dollar has to go before the 4. So try and understand what's going on there. The dollar four will stop that changing. So if you look at this now, if I copy that across, we've got the right answer, and it stayed as B5 because the dollar stops it from changing. Copy it down, and it stayed as C4 the dollar stops the 4 from changing. And if you copied this across and we copy it down we end up with a completed table. I'll just check, I'll just check one at random. So 500.9 should be 66.4 66.4 that's correct. To create the other table, um, you, we could just go click on the cell here, type in equals, and make it equal to that one. Enter. And then if you copy that one across, and copy it down, we've got the whole table delete that one because it's nothing in it. Um, change the number of decimal points. Okay. Uh, but we don't want to just copy it, we want to multiply it by the conversion factor from meters per second into miles per hour. So I'm going to multiply that one by um, 3.6 turns it into kilometers per hour and then times by 5 over 8 or you can divide by 1.6 and that will convert it into miles per hour. Copy that across and copy down again so that I'm clicking on the black square in the corner and that's it. So this should be 211.42 and it is 2.1, The formatting is quite useful to collect things together in terms of colour. Um, if you've got, you know, you've got colour on the computer, <coughs> if you've got a colour printer, so the bend radius is all in colour. Um, label it up correctly, um, and um, and that's fine. Um, presentation is is key. Um, so so um, make it as clear as you possibly can.